तो लॉट ऑफ द बेस्ट ऑन्टरप्रनोरशिप आइडियाज एक्चुअली कम फ्राम यू नो ऑन्टरप्रनोर्स ओन नीड्स यूज टू लिव ऑन द टॉप फ्लोर एंड स्कूल नीचे होता था सो आई काइंड ऑफ यू नो ग्रू अप विद बीकन हाउस ऑल अराउंड मी जीनियर डॉक्टर लाइक आर्मी इज लाइक वन थिंग यू नो यही तीन चीज़ें हैं सो उस टाइम आपके लाइक घर से किस किस्म का वो था लाइक वॉज एनी प्रेशर और लाइक इन योर माइंड लाइक वट यू वॉन्ट आई मीन इन माई ओन माइंड तो देर वॉज ऑलवेज प्रेशर टू बी यू नो हार्ड वर्किंग डिसिप्लिन एंड सक्सेसफुल इन वॉट आई डू लाइफ में भी जब आप नॉलेज को अप्लाई करते हैं तो आप किसी कॉन्टेक्स में अप्लाई करते हैं तो डी यू फील लाइक वो जो काउंसलिंग वाला भी एक एक मिसिंग एलिमेंट है वो अब कहीं ना कहीं जो है वो फिल हो रहा है जो काउंसलर्स का फोकस है वो बच्चे की होलिस्टिक डिवेलपमेंट पे है यू नो बच्चा यू नो क्लब्स एंड सोसाइटीज भी करे स्पोर्ट्स करे डिबेटिंग करे यू नो एक्स्ट्रा इन को करिकुलर एक्टिविटीज में एक्ज एंड अवार्ड जीते यू नो कोई गाँव का बच्चा हो या बच्ची हो जो कि यू नो हार्फर्ड या एम आई टी या स्टैनफर्ड पर हंड्रेड परसेंट स्कॉलरशिप पर जाए सॉफ्टवेयर इंजीनियर कंप्यूटर साइंस स्टूडेंट ग्रेजुएट हो रही है दे आर नॉट अप टू द स्टैंडर्ड्स दैट वी रिक्वायर फॉर एम्प्लॉयबिलिटी हमारा जो अभी क्राइसिस हुआ हुआ है दैट इज मोर बिकॉज इनफ्लोज हमारी नहीं आ रही राधा दैन आउटफ्लो ज्यादा और यहाँ इनफ्लोज के लिए आपको एक्सपोर्ट्स चाहिए ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन थाउजेंड रुपीज टू अबाउट थर्टी फाइव थाउजेंड रुपीज पर चाइल्ड दिस इज हाउ मच द गवर्नमेंट इज स्पेंडिंग ऑन एजुकेशन पर चाइल्ड इन पाकिस्तान तो अब रियालिटी ये है कि यू नो जो स्टैंडर्ड्स हैं दोज हैव बिन सेट बाई डिवेलप कंट्रीज Hi everyone, welcome to another episode. आज हमारे साथ बहुत खास मेहमान मौजूद हैं Someone who is running a very good business and uh, in the education sector especially. I am sure आप सारों ने uh, उनका जो स्कूल चेन है एंड नाउ माशा इट्स क्वाइट बेग विद लॉट ऑफ डिफरेंट थिंग्स जरूर सुना होगा बट यू माइट हैव एन मेट हिम इन पर्सन आई हैवन सीन हिम अलॉट टूडे वी हैव नासा विद अस who is the executive director of uh, the Beacon House group thank you so much nasir sir thank you thank you for having me on the show nasir sir thoda sa like before we go into your sort of background how did it all started i think your mother started that in 1975 which is 48 years ji ji bilkul uh, well it's a very interesting uh, story um, you know uh, we're about to celebrate our 50th anniversary, uh, anniversary inshallah in a couple of years uh, you know at the time when beacon house started um you know my mother was looking for actually a good quality uh, school for my older brothers and i think a lot of um, the best entrepreneurship ideas actually come from you know entrepreneurs own needs hmm. i think she realized at the time that uh, there were actually you know not any you know good quality uh, private schools in pakistan and you know i suppose government schools were not up to the uh, mark that she was looking for so unne अपने लिए शी परसीव दैट देर वॉज देर वॉज अ नीड एंड उसको एड्रेस करने के लिए शी एक्चुअली ओपन द फर्स्ट बीकन हाउस एंड वेन इट स्टार्टेड आउट इट वॉज एक्चुअली कॉल द जॉन्श विच मीन्स लिटल एंजल्स इन इन फ्रेंच शी सून रियलाइज दैट नो बडी कुड प्रोनाउंस द नेम प्रॉपरली एंड सो द नेम वॉज क्विकली चेंज लेकिन जो लिजॉन्श की ओरिजिनल ब्रांचेज हैं दोज आर स्टिल देर एंड इट इट स्टार्टेड in a in a fairly small way actually um, it started in my my great grandmother's uh, house unne ek udhar kuch space uh, occupy ki thi unne udhar shuru kiya and then it just um, you know grew from there really i mean there was definitely a need for good quality private education and the first uh Uh, branch was in Lahore. It was in Lahore. Right? Sorry, first branch was was in Lahore. Or Islamabad? Then, you guys. I think most of the people like know. I think most of the people 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 know. I think most of the residential premises but the h8 campus was definitely like the first big hmm. purpose built campus in uh, in the twin cities really so and talk to me a little bit about jab ye shuru hua in 1975 so hmm. how old were you and what was your sort of interaction but i was i'm i was born in 77 okay so i was uh, yeah uh still not born um uh, and i kind of uh, grew up with it it was interesting uh, you know because 
one of the uh, first like big beacon house schools was actually in in the house in our family house um you know uh, the house that i grew up in okay. so um, you know after some years you know we my mother wanted to move to a larger premises at that time obviously uh, you know, one didn't have the means, uh, you know, education can there, you couldn't get bank financing mm-hmm. or investors or anything. So uh, what, you know, we had this house, which my father had actually inherited from his father. And we were a young family, it was a biggish house. So we used to live uh, on the top floor and school niche hota tha. Wow. So I kind of, you know, grew up with Beacon House all around me. I used to be upstairs, I could see kids playing uh, downstairs. And uh, so I was surrounded by it. Um, so it's it's been a part of my life pretty much forever, essentially. And in that, then you also came from there. So when you like started growing up, then in that school, you. Aap... Well, initially, yeah. In, initially, I did go to Beacon House. Uh, and what happened at that time is that it was a very the comparatively smaller setup. So after going there for a few years, my um, you know, uh, my mother realized that, you know, bo, it's difficult to maintain discipline yeah. of your own children in your own school, particularly at that time when it was a small setup. So then I ended up going to the Lahore American School myself. Now, however, you know, um, 48 years later, uh, my kids go to Beacon House. So our brothers and sisters, They've all uh, uh, studied at Beacon House. Some of them have graduated. Some of them are still in school. Uh, but at that time, I I did I I was in Beacon House for a few years, and then I uh, went to the American School, uh, which was a big shock for me. Yeah. That I was not in my mother's school, and you have to accept the teachers' talk. But I think that's the reason she sent me there. <laughs> so yeah. I think uh, it served the intended purpose. And uh, like when you were growing up, just as we see today, that engineer, doctor, hmm. or lawyer, lawyers are also less than me. Engineer, doctor, or like army is like one. Thing, you know, yeah. यही तीन चीजें हैं सो so, उस टाइम आपके लाइक like, घर से किस किस्म का वो था लाइक वॉज एर एनी प्रेशर और लाइक इन योर माइंड लाइक वट यू वॉन्ट आई मीन इन माई ओन माइंड तो देर वॉज ऑलवेज प्रेशर टू बी यू नो हार्ड वर्किंग डिसिप्लिन एंड सक्सेसफुल इन वॉट आई डू इट वॉज इन अ पर्टिकुलर प्रोफेशन सो मच बट यू नो यू नो यू कैन इमेजिन यू नो कमिंग फ्रॉम अ फैमिली वेर यू हैव सच अ सक्सेसफुल मदर and then of course my father was successful in his own right in a in a different capacity so there was pressure to be successful and to be hard working and disciplined and to really make something of oneself in life and i think the greatest pressure is always that which comes from you uh, i think i'm lucky in that my parents kind of um, you know because my mother herself was an educationist i think she had a belief very early on in life that you have to be uh enjoy what you're doing and uh, be happy with what mm. you do um so she gave me space to um you know explore um and i eventually ended up uh, in education i guess as i said because i grown up mm. surrounded by beacon house so it kind of became a part of my personality and uh, you know i have a lot of respect for educationists and education my kids now keep complaining about the fact ke how you know i'm such a school person mm-hmm. and school ka koi mazak bhi nahi ho sakta you know i'm i'm like but you know this is uh, for me it's a very sacred thing um but you're right us time pe pakistan mein generally a concept tha aur kisi had tak ab bhi less so hai ke you know bachon ko certain professions mein you know doctors lawyers mm-hmm. engineers उन्हीं प्रोफेशंस में जाना चाहिए आई सॉ दैट अ लॉर्ड अराउंड मी ग्रोइंग अप इवन दो आई हैड मोर फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी बट यू नो आई एम हैप्पी दैट दैट्स चेंजिंग अ लिटिल बिट नाउ आई थिंक पेरेंट्स नाउ आर मोर ओपन टू स्टूडेंट्स प्रसूइंग मोर करियर ऑप्शन लेकिन उस टाइम आपके जहन में भी कुछ था कि आई वॉन्ट लाइक वोट what was you in your head yeah. at that time i mean i you know uh, uh yeah i mean i i i used to enjoy uh, you know computer programming quite a lot mujhe programming ka kafi shauk tha um and then uh, at least uh, in school and then when i you know went to uh, college i you know i i initially uh, decided to go for a computer science uh, degree in lums um didn't find it so exciting in college you know moved to social science which was kind of like a more broader based uh, uh, program where you explored a little bit of everything 
Um, and then after that, just, uh, you know, started working into entrepreneurship. You know, I think entrepreneurship, you know, I've done a lot of different things. I, you know, at one time I used to have an internet service provider. Then I, you know, went on to uh, try to send, set up a winged energy plant. Okay. Um, uh, first couple of projects didn't work out so well. Happens in life, you know, mm -hmm. it's a learning process. Um, and then uh, eventually uh, went back to, uh, you know, education uh, and uh, started working in Beacon House, you know, uh, in the educators first uh, as the uh, project director, then as the regional director of the northern region in Beacon House. And now um, higher education. So now I'm doing a number of things. I've, we've got uh, something called Beacon House International College where we're doing British degree, British undergraduate degrees in Pakistan. Um, I've uh, got a renewable energy company. So I decided to stop trying to set up energy projects with the government and do energy projects for the private sector. Yeah. So that's doing well, mashallah. And also one of the projects that we might talk a little bit about later today, Homebridge, mm. which is an yeah. online education project. So I kind of explored different things. Um, initially, um, had a big interest in, um, in computer programming and computer sciences, but then eventually ended up back predominantly in the education mm. sector. But that had an influence. I think this is one of the reasons um, that uh, within the Beacon House portfolio, I've started uh, getting very involved in our drive towards online and virtual education uh, because I think what we initial foundational uh, background in computers because mm. I did uh, uh, you know uh, a year or so of uh, computer programming and just an interest in computer technology kind of I think laid the foundation for everything I do so no matter what business I look at I, I do tend to look at the role that technology can play mm. in sort of enhancing that business improving it uh, and really improving the quality of service. And at that time, when you were growing up, and mm. as you said, you went to American school, at that time, when you were watching education, or at that time, when you were studying, and compared to now, not mm. just the American school, like generally in Pakistan, and I am sure that there will be also discussions in dinner tables in the family. How do you see the whole evolution of the Pakistani education system? Jee. So it's changed quite a lot. I have one thing, you know, which is very interesting. Um, uh, you know, uh, one of the areas that uh, Beacon House has been very passionate about, uh, you know, as a family, all of us, uh, is that we have to move our education and move from sort of very didactic, uh, lecture-based uh, teaching hai, and just teach and wrote memorization to more conceptual, broad-based, cross-curricular teaching. Up, pehli dafa humne ye karne ki koshish ki thi probably uh, uh, 15, 20 years ago. Okay. Um, I remember my elder brother, who's the CEO now. He set up something called the Discovery Center in uh, Karachi, uh, where they basically were robotics ko istamal karke. They used to teach uh, in a cross-disciplinary uh, fashion. And this is 20 years back. This is a while back. I mean, like way before it was on anyone's radar. Um, and then we uh, started uh, later the school uh, called Beacon House. In fact, uh, Beacon House TNS, some people might have heard of in Lahore. Um, and the reason it's called TNS is because it stands for the new school. At that time, we were thinking about it and we were like, yeah, it's a new concept in education. And we were just referring it to, to it internally as the new school. And then we thought it's such a new concept. Why don't we just call it TNS, like the mm. new school? It's... Uh, an acronym for really a new way of educating people. And when this uh, school opened, um, uh, I think up uh, at that time, you know, it was based on the philosophy, ke, you know, uh, you cannot really uh, gauge uh, learning simply by testing students mm. uh, and by making them rote memorize facts. You know, you have to contextualize it. It needs to be cross curricular. Uh, the way it is in life, you know, mm. life may be when you knowledge, you apply it in some context. Mein apply karte yeah. You know, I don't say this to you, what is 1021 times, you know, 1100. Mm. Just simple example, mm. you, you will do that calculation in some greater context. At that time, this was a novel concept in Pakistan. You know, when that school opened, it was really difficult to convince people that you're 
children will not be learning discrete subjects. They will be learning in a cross-curricular fashion. They'll be doing project-based learning. Um, there won't be so many exams. There, you know, uh, uh, there'll be more uh, uh, formative assessment, which is basically assessment for learning. You know, in order to improve the learning process, people didn't understand it. It took a while for the school to pick up, but now it's actually, mashallah, like uh, uh, one of the most successful schools in Pakistan, actually, mm. uh, not just in Beacon House, but anywhere. It's uh, in Lahore, um, you know, it's got a, a massive waiting list, people. And Hamare Joab, we've started doing a lot of IB uh, world schools in a lot of cities. So we have one in Islamabad, Multan, Lahore, jo Newlands ke schools, and they do the IB <coughs> curriculum. That's also cross curricular. And it's less exam based and most of the assessment is, you know, done through assignments and mm. projects and things like that. And people are very quickly coming towards that because I think people are understanding mm. that, you know, very mechanical sort of learning is not meaningful and beneficial. And particularly in a world, you know, where you have like artificial intelligence and your fifth industrial mm. revolution type of economies and uske the jo uh, creative thinkers hain unki jagah hogi otherwise um, you know there's really going to be no space for people to just regurgitate information because ai can do that a million times better than any human being can yeah. so i think parents are starting to understand that now and uh, uh, it's now not so difficult to launch a school which is doing IB curriculum or project-based curriculum and expect people to take it seriously. They now want those sort of curricula for their kids, mm. which wasn't the case even 10 years ago. Mm. Uh, people were very apprehensive. So I think the, the parent body has become more mature in Pakistan as well. So certainly. we have talked about the parent. Why do you think, like parents on the side, but do you feel like there is a main problem there? बिकॉज वहाँ एक तो जैसे आपने कहा जब आप लोग पंद्रह साल दस साल पहले कुछ नया आइडिया देते होंगे तो आई एम श्योर आप लोगों को भी काफ़ी वो आता होगा कि यार हम बच्चे को पता नहीं कहाँ डाल रहे हैं और अभी भी मोर लेस ये कि आप देखें कि कोई सोशल साइंसेज में जाना चाहता है या कहीं आई डोंट नो लाइक मीडिया में भी अब जाना चाहते हैं लोग अब तो मीडिया इज क्वाइट सोट ऑफ अंग बट जस्ट लाइक सिक्स ईयर्स बैक जी आई वॉन्टेड टू स्टडी जर्नलिज्म आई वॉन्टेड टू बी एन आर्टिस्ट तो स्टिल देर इज सो मच ऑफ यू नो एक सो वाई डू यू थिंक वट इज द रीज़न ऑफ दैट Yeah, it's it's a, a, a good question actually. Uh, let me uh, think about it. I think the one good thing is that it's a little bit less now. Mm, I think yeah. parents are more accepting of you know diverse career choices now. I think उनको नजर भी आ रहा है particularly when it comes to uh, journalism mm. and creative areas. I think they've seen um, that you know with social media, you know. self employment opportunities have opened mm. up which weren't there before yeah. so you know uh, people are uh, more open to that i think to be honest in the past it was probably just a question of you know job security mm. uh, you know parents were wanting what was best for their uh, their children and perhaps at that time waqai ye tha ke the you know the easiest and most secure way of getting a job perhaps was to become mm. a doctor or an engineer or you know what your typical yeah. uh, uh, fields hain um so that potentially there could have been a very practical reason for it as well um uh i think now what's happened as i said uh, is i think the economy has changed considerably mm. uh you know in fact a lot of uh a uh, very base level sort of engineering tasks and medical diagnosis tasks are you know going to be taken up by ai increasingly in the mm. future so in fact what's happening is a lot of people who are making money now are creative people mm. you know are pe- people uh, you know such as you guys you know who like have, youtubers like like you yeah. like you guys right you mm. guys have your own uh, channel you guys are seen by the world you you don't need a lot of money uh, the advantage with social media uh is that you don't need a lot of money to set up mm. a channel or to set up your own presence i mean you can arguably just do it with a cell phone mm. so if you're talented and you're creative and you have something interesting to say you can actually make a lot more money mm. than you could as a doctor or an engineer um potentially depending on how yeah. successful the doctor and engineer is but those opportunities are mm. now there mm. and i think that has probably had an impact 
on what parents are comfortable with their kids doing because they can also see that because the parent body is also younger mm. now and mm. you have a lot mm. of millennial parents or gen x parents you know who kind of grew up they were kind of in the you know they were in their sort of uh, late teens mm. or early 20s when the internet started happening you know they were part of the initial batch of users who got mm. on to facebook so mm. you have to understand that it's it's not the same parents yeah. now Sure. That, that 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 you were talking about 20 years ago you're you're talking about a group of parents who themselves are on instagram mm. on facebook on social media those parents a lot of the people they're following mm. and their source, sources of information are also coming from blogs True. those parents aren't necessarily going to conventional news sources so they're seeing what the value of that media is and they can see how their uh, children could potentially make a living and potentially make an impact by being engaged uh, in social media hmm. well, um, and in in on on the more creative side of life so i think that's had an hmm. impact also i think usme pehle wale mein bhi tha shayad ab bhi i feel like kuch hai kuch kuch had tak ke जो काउंसलिंग वाली साइड है बिकॉज पेरेंट्स आल्सो डोंट नो के यार अच्छा ठीक है मीडिया लगता है तो बड़ा कूल है या सोशल साइंसेज हैं बट इसमें पोटेंशियल है नहीं है तो वो जो काउंसलिंग वाली जो साइड है अब आई रिमेंबर वन आई वाज इन यूके मतलब मैं तो बैचलर्स कर रहा था बट जो उस टाइम जब हम कॉलेज के बच्चों से वहाँ पूछते थे दे ऑन देयर आई थिंक ओ ए लेवल्स लाइक दे टेस्ट एवरी थिंग सो आई रिमेंबर वन आई वॉज इन बैचलर्स तो मैं तो मीडिया से पहली दफ़ा शायद मैंने एक्सप्लोर किया है बट देन दे वर लाइक स्टूडेंट्स जो ओ लेवल्स में अच्छा खासा पढ़ के आए हुए थे सो वो जहरा एक बहुत बड़ा गैप तो वहाँ तो डी यू फील लाइक वो जो काउंसलिंग वाला भी एक एक मिसिंग एलिमेंट है वो अब कहीं ना कहीं जो है वो फिल हो रहा है आई आई थिंक सो आई मीन एज फार एज यूनिवर्सिटी काउंसलिंग एंड करियर काउंसलिंग इज कंसर्न यू नो आई थिंक मोस्ट गुड स्कूल यू नो ऑफर इट नाउ एंड एंड दी अदर थिंग इज के यू नो पहले तो ज़्यादा फोकस यही होता था कि बच्चों के ग्रेड्स अच्छे आने चाहिए आप अगर आप स्कूल लेवल पे भी देखें कॉलेज लेवल पे भी देखें तो जो काउंसलर्स का फोकस है वो बच्चे की होलिस्टिक डेवलपमेंट पे है यू नो बच्चा यू नो क्लब्स एंड सोसाइटीज भी करे स्पोर्ट्स करे डिबेटिंग करे यू नो एक्स्ट्रा एंड को करिकुलर एक्टिविटीज़ में एक्ज एंड अवार्ड जीते बिकॉज एक्चुअली जो यूनिवर्सिटी एडमिशन्स भी हैं पर्टिकुलरली आप टॉप रैंक यूनिवर्सिटीज़ को देखें यू के में यू एस में स्पेशली वो सिर्फ ग्रेड्स को नहीं देखते तो अब जनरली काफ़ी ज़्यादा एक फोकस हो गया काउंसलिंग पे सो दैट बच्चों को सिर्फ एक्डेमिकली स्ट्रॉग नहीं रखा जाए बट उनको एक यू नो एक स्कूल के अंदर एक टीम हो जो कि उनको होलिस्टिक प्रोफाइल डेवलपमेंट के साथ असिस्ट कर सके तो नॉट जस्ट अस और भी स्कूल्स हैं जो अच्छे स्कूल्स हैं उनके अंदर जनरली काउंसलर्स होते हैं जो बच्चों के साथ बैठ के उनकी क्लब्स एंड स्पोर्ट्स वर्कआउट करते हैं सोशल वर्क हमारे पास बीकन हाउस में एक प्रोग्राम है विच इज़ कॉल्ड एस विच बेसिकली कम्बाइंस यू नो कम्यूनिटी सर्विस एक्स्ट्रा करिकुलर एक्टिविटीज़ एंड फ्यू अदर थिंग्स एंड हमारे एस कोऑर्डिनेटर्स होते हैं स्कूल्स में जिनका ऑलमोस्ट टोटल जॉब नॉन करिकुलर ही होता है मतलब कि जो मेन सब्जेक्ट्स हैं दे आर नॉट सो कंसर्न विद दो दे आर मोर कंसर्न कि बच्चा और क्या कर रहे हैं और बच्चे को यू नो पब्लिक स्पीकिंग आती है कॉन्फिडेंस है यू you नो know, उसको डिबेटिंग में आप शामिल कराएं उसको कुछ सोशल वर्क में शामिल कराएं यू you नो know, ताकि उसको एक आइडिया हो कि हाउ यू नो ही इज़ अ पार्ट ऑफ अ लार्जर कम्यूनिटी एंड ही हैज़ टू गिव बैक टू दैट कम्यूनिटी एंड रियली प्रोफाइल डिवेलपमेंट पे सो एक्चुअली आप स्कूल्स के अंदर एक पूरा पूरी टीम्स बन गई हैं जो देखती सिर्फ इन चीज़ों को करियर काउंसलिंग प्रोग्राम इन बीकन हाउस जो कि सिर्फ यूनिवर्सिटी एडमिशन्स को नहीं देखती वो उनकी पूरी लाइक प्रोफाइल डेवलपमेंट पे वर्क करती है एन इंटायर टीम जो कि सिर्फ इस चीज़ को देखती है ऑल्सो अराउंड द वर्ल्ड या मे बी इन पाकिस्तान इज़ देर आई नॉट से लाइक अ सॉफ्टवेयर बट इज़ देर अ टूल जहाँ इफ यू मेजर लाइक बच्चे का आई डोंट नो लाइक फ्रॉम नर्सरी टू प्रैप और उसमें डेटा सारा आ रहा है और वो फिर ए आई टूल्स आपको अगर बताएं कि यार बच्चा इस साइट पे देर इज़ अ मोर पोटेंशियल ही इज गुड एड ही इज़ नॉट गुड एड जी देखें बिल्कुल हैं आई मीन दे आर जहाँ तक दे आर डेफिनेटली टूल्स आउट देर कुछ uh, ये ऐसे टूल्स हैं जो कि बच्चे का मुख्तलिफ यू नो सब्जेक्ट्स में 
ایپٹیٹیوڈ میجر کر لیتے ہیں کہ میتھ سائنس جو کورس سبجیکٹس ہیں بٹ جہاں تک کریئر سلیکشن کا تعلق ہے دیر ناؤ آئی ناٹ شیور دیٹ ویو امپلائی سم تھنگ لائک دس بٹ آن مور ہولسٹک سینس اس کے اندر پھر آپ کو یو نو سائیکولوجیکل پروفائلنگ اور اس قسم کی چیزیں بھی کرنی ہوئیں گی دے آر ٹولز آؤٹ دیر ڈیفینیٹلی وے یو کین ڈو لائک اے فل سائیکولوجیکل پروفائل آپ سبجیکٹس کو بھی دیکھیں آپ سب کچھ دیکھیں اینڈ وہ آپ کو ایڈوائس دے سکے گا ون آف دا تھنگز وی ڈو ان بیکن ہاؤز از وی یوز وی یوز ایڈیپٹیو اسٹینڈرڈائز ٹیسٹ تو ہمیں یہ آئیڈیا ہو سکتا ہو جاتا ہے کہ بچوں کی یو نو کن ایریاز کن سبجیکٹس میں اسٹرینتھ سادھ آئے پھر جو کریئر ایڈوائزرز ہیں وہ بچوں کے ساتھ ریگولرلی کمیونیکیٹ کر رہے ہوتے ہیں تو بیسڈ آن دیر انٹریکشن ود دا اسٹوڈنٹس بیسڈ آن دیر اسٹرینتھس اینڈ ویکنیسز ان ڈفرینٹ سبجیکٹس وہ پھر ایڈوائز بچوں کو کر سکتے ہیں کہ آپ ہیومینٹیز کی طرف زیادہ جائیں سائنسز کی طرف زیادہ جائیں کس طرف آپ کو زیادہ جانا چاہیے میں ایک چیز ضرور کہنا چاہوں گا اینڈ آلسو ٹو پیرنٹس یو نو اور میں اپنے بچوں کے ساتھ یہی کرتا ہوں کہ بچوں کو کبھی یہ نہیں کہنا چاہیے کہ تم اس سبجیکٹ میں جا کے اسپیشلائز کرو یو نو بیکاز نمبر ون بچے کا شاید اس میں انٹرسٹ نہیں ہوئے اور نمبر ٹو بچے کا شاید اس میں ایپٹیٹیوڈ نہیں ہوئے اور اگر بچے کا ایپٹیٹیوڈ اور انٹرسٹ ایک سبجیکٹ میں نہیں ہوئے گا نا وہ اگر اس کو کر بھی لیں گے دل بھی ان ہیپی اینڈ پرابلی ان سکسیز ہاف ہارٹیڈ ہاف ہارٹیڈ کہیں گے آپ کو بچے کو یہ کہنا چاہیے کہ یو ہیو ٹو ورک ہارڈ یو ہیو ٹو بی ڈسپلن and there are no shortcuts in life or cheese aisi dhoondo which you're passionate about which you find interesting but isliye nahi select karo kyunki tumhe aasan lagti hai kyunki koi bhi cheez achhe sahi karni hoye na to aasan nahi hoti to bachon ko thoda sa parents itna freedom de ki wo apni khud aptitude aur attitude ke mutabik apni subject selection kare and the career advisors are there generally they will speak to the kids wo bacche ko samajhte hain ke bacche ka aptitude zyada you know humanities ki taraf hai you know media ki taraf hai visual arts ki taraf hai mathematics ki taraf hai computer science ki taraf hai grades kis taraf ja rahi hain interest level kis taraf ja raha hai and what should they select so we try to give them that گائڈنس ان اسکول وی ڈونٹ ہیو لائک ایک ہمارے پاس ٹول نہیں ہے جس کے اندر ہم سب کچھ ڈال دیں جو ہمیں پھر فائنل آنسر دے دیں لیکن وی ہیو ڈفرینٹ ٹولس اسٹینڈرڈائز ٹیسٹنگ میں اس میں آ جاتی ہے جنرل کمیونیکیشن جو بچے کے ساتھ ہو رہی ہوتی ہے اس سے بہت پتہ لگ جاتا ہے ٹیچرس کے ساتھ انفارمل جو کانورسیشنز ہوتی ہیں اینڈ وہ ہم ڈیٹا ٹرینگولیٹ کر کے پھر بچوں کی مدد کرتے ہیں کہ وہ کچھ نہ کچھ اپنی سبجیکٹ سلیکشنز اور کیئر سلیکشنز اس کے مطابق کریں سو ابھی کچھ عرصہ پہلے آئی واز ریڈنگ اباؤٹ کہ آئی تھنک یونیسیف کی شاید رپورٹ تھی کہ تقریباً کوئی ٹوینٹی ٹو پوائنٹ فائیو ملین بچے ابھی بھی اسکولس نہیں جا سکے سک رہے اور ذرا آپ لوگ تقریباً پچاس سال آلموسٹ ہونے والے ہیں ویئر ڈو یو سی دا رول آف گورمنٹ بیکاز ذرا وہ ایک جنرل ڈسکشنز تو ہوتی ہیں کانفرنسز بھی ہوتی ہیں بٹ ذرا آپ نے تو ایک پورا ڈیکیڈس میرے خیال سے اس پوری چیز کو دیکھیں ویئر ڈو یو سی دیٹ بیکاز آئی تھنک آف دا کیمرہ بھی ہم لوگ ڈسکس کر رہے تھے کہ اٹس ناٹ جسٹ اباؤٹ کہ جی بجٹ میں پیسے نہیں جا رہے بیکاز دیٹس دا پرسپشن آئی تھنک کہ جی وہ آرمی کے پاس چلا جاتا ہے یا ڈیفینس میں دا بجٹ از دیر بٹ وہ ایفیشنسی اور وہ والے جو مسائل ہیں سارے سو یا آئی واز بالکل یو نو وی ویر ہیونگ دس ڈسکشن آف کیمرہ اینڈ یو نو لائک دا جنرل ویو ایز کہ جی ایجوکیشن بجٹ بہت کم ہے اینڈ ایکچولی Um, I think um, it's, the issue is not that it's a lot The issue is that budget is not being used in a way. You know, just on the way here, actually, I, I, I googled ke, you know, what is the average uh, education spend per child in Pakistan. It was different for different provinces. But, uh, you know, it was, and I won't say that it's less than it's less than it. It's data is online, but it was somewhere between like 20, 21,000 rupees to about 35,000 rupees per child. This is how much the government is spending on uh, education per child in Pakistan. Now, the private sector, we are, you know, although people say that private schools are expensive, but we are actually charging much less hmm. than what the government is spending per child. Our, even Beacon House, ke andar, which is comparatively, you know, okay, it's uh, uh, by Pakistan, it's a medium upper sort of uh, feature uh, school, I suppose, but our... Uh, fee tier in Beacon House is below 20,000 rupees in most cases, which is uh, less than the amount that, uh, that, uh, that is being sank by the least spending mm. province mm. in Pakistan on a per child basis, with the highest being around 30,000 plus. 
تو اگر آپ یہ دیکھیں کہ دا گورمنٹ ان سم پروونش ان سم پروونس از اسپینڈنگ ففٹی پرسینٹ مور ٹو ٹرائی ٹو ایجوکیٹ چلڈرن دین واٹ پرائیویٹ اسکولز آر چارجنگ ایون ایٹ دا سم واٹ ہائر اینڈ دیٹس دیٹس این الارمنگ سچویشن تو مجھے دیکھیں اس چیز سے یہ آن دا ون ہینڈ اٹس ڈس اپوائنٹنگ آن دی ادر ہینڈ دیر از آلسو سم گیو سم لائٹ ایٹ دی اینڈ آف دا ٹرنل کہ پرہیپس has enough money yeah. to deal with the issue. You know, if you don't have enough money to deal with the issue, that's a very major mm. issue. Hota hai. But, mm. So perhaps we have the resources to deal with the issue, but our approach is wrong. Now, government, ka, um, I mean, in my uh, personal opinion, mein to, uh, uh, there are various challenges. I think we have heard of everyone of ghost schools and ghost mm. teachers. You know, there's a lot of infrastructure spending that happens on schools, money that's being donated by mm. foreign donors. Sometimes you get a lot of schools, but in their education outcomes, they are very bad. I mean, sometimes you get physical buildings, they are very good, even better than private schools. But mm. the quality of education is zero. Um, you know, sometimes you get buildings in a very bad condition mein milti hai because there is no maintenance and you keep so much. A lot of times you have teachers who are, you know, perhaps not teaching, mm-hmm. but yet are on the payroll yeah. or their attendance is not right, their mm-hmm. monitoring is not right. Hori. So the, all these things are coming together to lead to the education crisis in Pakistan. Um, I mean, my personal opinion uh, is that... Um, you know, uh, the private sector should be engaged more. Mm. Uh, you know, honestly, the private sector is more than happy to do a lot of work uh, just to help the country out purely on a, a CSR social mm. responsibility basis. Uh, you know, naturally, um, uh, you know, uh, all educationists, uh, you know, get into education because they have sort of a, a social impact uh, 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 they want to make a social mm-hmm. impact. And there's no better way of doing that than this. I think if the government uh, engages with the private sector more, perhaps we can work together to actually better engage the funds that the government already has uh, to give fantastic um, education outcomes. Um, there are examples in other countries, in African countries, where certain uh, private private public partnership initiatives have been incredibly successful in hugely raising education outcomes without spending more mm-hmm. money mm-hmm. in fact sometimes spending less, money. less exactly um, yeah. you know so if it's possible uh, in 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 africa uh, it should be possible in pakistan i, I don't want to take any specific examples mm-hmm. because you know i'm not endorsing any particular project But, um, you know, um, uh, there, there have been very successful cases of doing that. You have done a private-public uh, partnership ka zikr kiya. recently. I think for the last sort of six-ish years, we have seen the start-up culture in the NICs government has started to make it. That was a very good example. I think if that thing is on the schooling wali side, pe, education wali side, pe, and which is... Actually, I think people might be shocked that you have like, these 20-30,000 people, like, people thought that maybe they didn't get money. You can Google it. Yeah. So It's on, I just Google it. It just pops up just say how much is Pakistan spending per child yeah, yeah, yeah. on education and it's uh, 50% more than the fee of a so-called elite private yeah. school. I mean, that's a shocking revelation. Mm-hmm. Really. Mm-hmm. And where uh, do you see the role of now, AI, I mean, the world, I think, is very far ahead. We are also very far ahead. But still, mm-hmm. the online education, especially after the COVID, so I'm mm-hmm. sure you have introduced a lot of things. Uh, where do you see this yeah. online education? And again, in that, I think, two or three things will come in that ایک تو ذرا ایکسپینسز بھی کم ہیں پرابلی یو کین ریچ ٹو اے لاٹ آف پیپل ہو کین ناٹ گیٹ ایکسیس ٹو دا اسکولس سو دیکھیے اس کے اندر میں ایک اور جو میں پہلے بات کر رہا تھا اباؤٹ انگیجنگ ود دا پرائیویٹ سیکٹر یو نو سم آف دا موسٹ افیکٹیو پبلک پرائیویٹ پارٹنرشپ وینچرز ان دا ورلڈ ہیو ریلائڈ ہیولی آن ٹیکنالوجی آئی تھنک وہ تو آپ کو یو نو آئی تھنک ٹیکنالوجی ہیز شون ان ڈفرینٹ سیکٹرز that it has the ability to reduce cost uh, and improve effectiveness. So, um, I mean, technology, uh, ek, I think it's, it's, it's really important. 
especially in a country like Pakistan, where, you know, there are infrastructure limitations and there are constraints in the number of qualified teachers we have mm. in Pakistan to embrace technology. You know, uh, it can allow us to provide quality education without building considerable existing mm. infrastructure. Jo aapko online education ke infrastructure chahiye, basically you need uh, aapko 4G, 3G network, 4G bhi nahi, aapko 3G network chahiye, aur aapko ek basic smartphone chahiye. Aap, I, I don't remember off the cuff, but based on uh, uh, my recollection, I think Pakistan has... Uh, I think more than 50% 3G network yeah. penetration and the number of uh, people who have smartphones with 3G access in Pakistan is actually quite incredibly high. Hmm. Uh, you know, uh, you know, you will see all, you know, people, even people who are earning like uh, uh, 15,000 rupees a month have a used, yeah. you know, secondhand smartphone often with, you know, a low cost hmm. uh, 3G access on it. So the in, in fact the, the the cost of rolling out technology infrastructure is probably the lowest and mm. a lot of it has already been rolled out. So I to think that um, uh, in order to really uh, one of the key elements of using our existing education budget more effectively will be to use technology to try to distribute quality teaching mm. throughout Pakistan mm. without in, without having to train. Uh, a lot more teachers and without having to build a lot more infrastructure. I think it's kind of low hanging fruit, which we should try to utilize. Within Beacon House, we've started doing the same. Also recently, humne ek, uh, we've uh, introduced uh, an online, uh, not fully online, we call it hybrid, but it's predominantly online um, A-level program called Homebridge. You know, we started with A-levels because we thought kids are older mm. and they're more able to, you know, manage their own, you know, schedule and studies. But the idea is to introduce, you know, uh, uh, O-levels as well um, and uh, in the future. So when they start A-levels ke saath kiya and um, what we've been able to do is, you know, we we brought the uh, hamara jo, uh, traditional A-level program hai, you know, uh, the fee is like around 50,000 rupees, uh, you know, uh, a month. The infrastructure is expensive, uh, teaching costs. There's a lot of uh, affiliated costs with uh, Homebridge uh, because uh, we do all the lesson delivery online. Uh, we've been able to bring the cost down to about uh, 13 or 14,000 rupees a month, depending on, you know, what subject selection you have. So it's like one fourth of the cost of a regular A-level program. Um, and, and, and we, you know, we've been, this is our second year now, and we're finding that we're getting great results. The students are getting excellent results. We're even taking students from, uh, from metric backgrounds. Okay. And even metric students are doing really well because online classes, may live classes, may they get personalized attention. Uh, you know, there's no distraction. Hmm. Um, it's very easy for us to also monitor the teaching yeah. now because in um, um, a physical classroom, mein to, you have to go into the classroom sure. to do an, you know, to do a quality assurance evaluation. Either we can have QA people who just hop into online classes and one to the hmm. other. So our QA is easier. We have no infrastructure costs. So we're able to pass a lot of those savings on uh, to parents. So I think it's worked really well for us. Um, you know, it's called Homebridge. We're and is it a separate brand? Yeah, it's called, is it just it's a, a separate brand? Okay. It's within the Beacon House umbrella. It's called Homebridge by Beacon House. Okay. Um, so it's under the group umbrella. Um, and we're in fact offering uh, 200 free scholarships with Akhuat right now. And the, like, I wanted to go there. Where did the idea come? I mean, how did you get with The idea was like, uh, you know, Homebridge was conceptualized uh, you know, uh, you know, I, I think for any venture to be successful, right, it needs to have a bigger vision. You know, mm. it needs to make a difference to people's lives. You know, you can't enter any venture just, you know, honestly, for financial reasons, mm. it makes no sense. So I think we had a lot of uh, one of the reasons uh, we did Homebridge is because we wanted to make quality education available to a much larger number of people. And so, so there were two things, you know, we, we wanted uh, to, for it to be a, 
ویہیکل فار سوشل موبیلٹی ایک جو پاکستان کے اندر یو نو جو جن بچوں نے اے این او لیولس کیا ہوتا ہے اور جن بچوں نے میٹرک کیا ہوتا ہے ان کو سیم سیم امپلائمنٹ اپرچونیٹیز نہیں ملتی یو نو سیم دے ڈونٹ گیٹ ایکسیس ٹو دا سیم یونیورسٹیز نیسیسرلی ایز کیڈز ہو ڈان انٹرنیشنل ایجوکیشن وی وانٹ ٹو ریڈیوس دا بیریئر ٹو اینٹری اینڈ الاؤ مچ لارجر نمبر آف پیپل ٹو گیٹ ایکسیس ٹو دیٹ لیول آف ایجوکیشن بٹ وی ریئلائز دیٹ ایون فرض کریں ایٹ ٹویلو فورٹین تھاؤزینڈ روپی لمٹ یو نو اٹ ول بی آؤٹ آف دا ریچ آف مینی پیپل اینڈ بیکاز ہماری ایک مشن تھی کہ اٹ نیڈس بی اے ویہیکل فار سوشل موبیلٹی وی وانٹیڈ ٹو میک اٹ ایز انکلوسو ایز پاسبل سو یو نو وی گاڈ ان ٹچ وی ڈاکٹر امجد ثاقب یو نو وی ورک ود ہیم ان دا پاس یو نو ہوز دا چیئرمین آف خوت بریلینٹ ہیومن بینگ ریئلی ہیز ڈان ٹریمینڈس تھنگز اوور دا لاسٹ ٹین ایئرز وی ہیڈ ورک ود ہیم ان دا پاس آن سم فوڈ ڈرائیوز یہ کووڈ کے اندر ہم نے ریشن ڈسٹریبیوشن اس قسم کی چیزیں ان کے ساتھ مل کے کی تھیں اینڈ وی تھاٹ دیر از نو بیٹر پرسن بیکاز ہیز انٹائر ویژن از آلسو وہ جو یو نو کہتے ہیں نا دیٹ سینگ کہ گیو اے مین اے فش اینڈ یو نو ہیل بی ہنگری این این آئی ڈونٹ نو ان این آر بٹ ٹیچ اے مین ٹو فش اینڈ ہیل بی فیڈ فار لائف سو ڈاکٹر امجد کی بھی یہی ویژن ہے آف ایجوکیٹنگ پیپل یو نو ناٹ آف جسٹ گیونگ ڈونیشنس وہ جو مائکرو لینڈنگ بھی کرتے ہیں وہ لوگوں کو کرتے ہیں ٹو سیٹ اپ دیر اون بزنسز یو نو سو دیٹ دے ہیو اے فیوچر سو آئی تھنک وہ ویژنز اے لائن دیر وی وانٹ ٹو گیو پیپل اے پاتھ وے ٹو ریئلی ایکچولائز دیر ڈریمس Uh, and that coincided with what he wants to do. So we got You know, they obviously have access uh, to a donor network that shares his vision. Mm. And because our vision and his vision coincide, uh, we decided to do it. So we're starting with uh, 200 completely free scholarships, meaning you don't you know, spend anything at all. Um, uh, there's a need-based criteria, which is actually quite high. I think if your uh, monthly income is less than 200,000, a month or you can okay. you can qualify for it which would cover almost mm. a lot of people mm. in Pakistan but naturally it's on a first come first serve basis and those 200 scholarships as you can imagine are running out pretty quickly and but what's the criteria so you go there like there's there application there's some academic criteria also but uspe we can be flexible right what we want to see is the the kid is willing to uh, work hard they can have those are totally free scholarships and hum met you know mere liye what would make me really happy اور میں ہمیشہ ٹیم کو کہتا ہوں کہ ہماری ڈریم یہ ہونی چاہیے کہ انہوں کوئی بچہ ایک یو نو ایسے یو نو کوئی گاؤں کا بچہ ہوئے یا بچی ہوئے جو کہ یو نو ہارفرڈ یا ایم آئی ٹی یا اسٹینفرڈ پہ ہنڈریڈ پرسینٹ اسکالرشپ پہ جائے یو نو وی نیڈ اسٹوریز لائک دس ان ہوم بریج یو نو دس از یو نو وائڈ ایگزٹ سو وٹ وی ڈو وانٹ ٹو میک شیور از دا کیڈس دیٹ اویل دی اسکالرشپس ورک ہارڈ بیکاز دیر از اے لمیٹیڈ نمبر آف دیم یو نو وی وانٹ دیم ناٹ ٹو ٹیک دس اپرچونیٹی فار گرانٹیڈ وی وانٹ کیڈس ہو ہو آر گوئنگ ٹو ریئلی ورک ہارڈ سو ایون ایف دی ایکڈیمکس انیشیلی ہیو ناٹ آر سلائٹلی بلو دی ایلیجیبلٹی کرائیٹیریا فار دا اسکالرشپ ایف وی کین سی دیٹ دا چائلڈ از ولنگ ٹو ورک ہارڈ um and really make a future for themselves we can make exceptions baki hmm. financial uh, 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 a top ceiling humne rakhi but like i said that's 200000 a month hmm. uh, household income which is so high that most people you know i think if your household income is higher than that you shouldn't be yeah. applying for an akhwat scholarship hmm. let's say right so usse upar it's it's for you know uh, it's that is the jo humne cap rakha hua hai and uh, you know we're hoping that we'll get some amazing kids into this program and more than anything have some incredible uh, stories uh, to tell uh, once these kids graduate our first batch will graduate uh, in a year um, and we're hoping to have some amazing placements for that batch and what we're really proud of is a lot of these kids come from backgrounds that typical beacon house mm-hmm. a level kids wouldn't come from and that's really what we want to achieve. And for them it's a hybrid model that if they want they can come. Uh, so hybrid was the way that we we've tried to uh, do the best of both worlds. So the core academics are online. So the lesson delivery that's basically done 
uh, through a combination of uh, recorded lectures and live lectures hmm. so what we so it's a bit of a flipped classroom model actually which is also innovative ke hum jo jo recorded lecture that introduces all the uh, all the topics uh, which will be discussed in the live lecture so we want kids to go over that uh, you know uh, it's divided into like 10 minute uh, topics taaki you know because a video ko hmm. Hmm. there's research that suggests ki after 10 minutes bachon ka attention span jo hai na bachon ka nahi anyone yeah. their attention span you know it starts dropping off so we have like a quiz after every 10 minutes and we recorded lectures humne khud record kiye using some of our best a level teachers um kids are expected to review those lectures so when they come to the live lecture which happens like I think four days a week live lectures होते हैं और फिर फ्राइडे को रिविजन क्लासेज होती हैं दे आर सपोज टू नो द टॉपिक सो दैट वेन दे कम टू क्लास इट्स मोर अबाउट एक्सपैंडिंग ऑन दैट टॉपिक asking questions if there's something that the kids are unclear about so we actually want them to be very prepared before they come into class and and surprisingly because of this flipped classroom model we've actually seen that quite often some of the kids are better prepared hmm. and picking up concepts quicker they, than they are in the brick and mortar school hmm. situation because over there they kind of expect to be spoon fed in class hmm. like a teacher hame sab kuch batayega either we're trying to tell them ki yaar humne tumhe sare re- lectures record karke then you, you can go back this, and yeah take the quizzes like you can go back and study it but then when you come to class really use that time to cement your knowledge hmm. um and refine it uh, and enhance it and maybe delving to uh, related things which might not specifically be covered in the recorded lecture so it's a it's a it's it's also kind of the first time we're doing a flipped classroom model which is something which we may start adopting in Be- Be- beacon house brick and mortar schools also because it's a general trend in the whole mm-hmm. world now ke aap basic padhai aur research on ghar pe kar le because it's all available and when you come to school do more class work mm-hmm. group work discussion work more of activities you more know thoda sa yeah. I think एक डिबेट हम और भी बहुत ज़्यादा सुनते हैं वो जो ए लेवल्स वर्सेज द एफ एस सी थिंक जी एक निज़ाम अच्छा है वो कहते हैं नहीं जी ये तो बाहर हम पैसे भेज रहे हैं या बाहर का निज़ाम ला रहे हैं एंड देन आई थिंक आपको याद होगा कि गवर्नमेंट के अंदर भी वो जो वन करिकुलम सिंगल करिकुलम की एक डिस्कशन शुरू हुई सो हाउ डू यू सी ये वाले जो दो तीन सिर्फ आपके डिफरेंट यू नो सेक्टर्स चल रहे हैं एक तो मैं पहले ये कहना चाहूँगा कि जो सिंगल नेशनल करिकुलम है ना that's actually not incompatible with uh, with uh, with the uh, international education systems it's an interesting thing um on the single national curriculum me actually defined ye kiya hai ki aapne certain subjects padhani hai uh aur un subjects mein aapne certain attainment levels achieve karne hai by x date unne ye nahi kaha ki aap baki ki cheeze padha nahi sake sakte so actually you know humne uh, jo snc ki requirements hain वो हमने अब तक मुख्तलिफ बीकनाज में कुछ हम मुख्तलिफ करिकुला कर रहे हैं तो हमने कैम्ब्रिज करिकुलम में भी इंकॉपरेट किए हैं आई बी करिकुलम में भी इंकॉपरेट किए हैं मुख्तलिफ जो करिकुला हम रन कर रहे हैं उनके अंदर हमने एस एन सी की रिक्वायरमेंट्स एक्चुअली इंकॉपरेट कर लिए हैं तो उधर एक्चुअली कोई डिस्क्रेपेंसी नहीं है आई अंडरस्टैंड कि ओबियसली हर मुल्क के अंदर यू नो दर्टन नेशनल आइडेंटिटी इज़ इम्पॉर्टेंट एंड वो आप एग्जिस्टिंग करिकुलम फ्रेमवर्क के अंदर भी डाल सकते हैं अब जो आई बी फ्रेमवर्क फॉर एग्जाम्पल है वो तो बहुत ब्रॉड है उसके अंदर तो इट्स वेरी फ्लेक्सीबल कि आप उसके अंदर क्या इंक्लूड या एक्सक्लूड करना चाह रहे हैं अदर दैन द बेस्ट न्यूमरेसी लिटरेसी और जो उनके कोर टॉपिक्स हैं इट्स फ्लैक्सीबल इन मैनी अदर एरिया सो दैट इज़ डूएबल देखिए जहाँ तक दूसरी बात है ना और outflow of uh, of capital mujhe thoda sa ye uh, actually in a general sense bhi uh, 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 mujhe uh, is cheez pe thoda sa concern hai ki hum pakistan pe outflows pe itna cons- uh, concerned hote hain ki inflows ke bare mein hum bhul jate hain actually hame dekhiye jo pakistan ke andar unfortunately abhi jo metric fa fsc jo local system hai उसकी uh, उसके लर्निंग आउटकम्स जो हैं वो इंटरनेशनल लेवल पे नहीं hmm. पहुंचे यू मीन द क्वालिटी ऑफ क्वालिटी ऑफ दैट लर्निंग एंड अक्सर होता ये यू नो वी हैव वी हैव सॉफ्टवेयर हाउस इन हाउस एज वेल आई नो अ नंबर ऑफ पीपल जो सॉफ्टवेयर हाउसेस चलाती हैं दे से कि हालांकि पाकिस्तान में न्यूमेरिकली काफ़ी ज़्यादा सॉफ्टवेयर इंजीनियर कंप्यूटर साइंस स्टूडेंट्स ग्रेजुएट हो रहे हैं दे आर नॉट अप टू द स्टैंडर्ड्स दैट वी रिक्वायर 
فار امپلائبلٹی ان کو پھر اپنے دے ہیو ٹو ران دیر اون بوٹ کیمپس وہ اپنی خود ٹریننگ کرتے ہیں اب دیکھیں یہ تو ان ایکسیپٹیبل چیز ہے اینڈ موسٹ آف دیم ہیو انٹرنیشنل کلائنٹس دیٹس وائی پاکستان کے اندر آؤٹ فلوز کو دیکھنے کی ضرورت ہے لیکن سب سے زیادہ ہمیں ان فلوز کو مانیٹر کرنے کی ضرورت ہے ہمارا جو ابھی کرائسس ہوا ہوا ہے دیٹ از مور بیکاز ان فلوز ہماری نہیں آ رہی رادر دین آؤٹ فلو زیادہ ہو رہی ہیں ان آؤٹ ان فلوز کے لیے آپ کو ایکسپورٹس چاہیے اب ایکسپورٹس میں پاکستان میں یا آپ کا ٹیکسٹائل ایکسپورٹ ہو سکتا ہے اینڈ آئی فلی فیل کہ ان فیکٹ گورنمنٹ کو بڑی اسٹرانگ پالیسی بنانی چاہیے آف ٹیکسٹائل ایکسپورٹس بیکاز وہ ورٹکلی انٹیگریٹیڈ ہو سکتا ہے فرام کاٹن ٹو فنش پروڈکٹ وی نیڈ ٹو اسٹارٹ فارمنگ مور کاٹن انسٹیڈ آف شوگر کین آلسو بٹ دیٹس اے سیپریٹ میٹر دی ادر تھنگ وچ وی کین ایکسپورٹ از سروسز سافٹ ویئر سروسز یو نو آپ بنگلہ دیش کو دیکھیں one of the cornerstones of their success has been that they've been able to develop uh, a services export sector to hum pakistan mein agar apne bachon ko us level ki taaleem nahi denge ke wo international clients ki demands ko meet kar sake to hum software export kaise karenge to mujhe sirf ye hai ke aap apne آؤٹ فلوز کو بچانے کے لیے اپنے ان فلوز کو تباہ نہیں کر لیں اینڈ انفارچونیٹلی جو ہمارا لوکل سسٹم ہے آئی ایم شیور اگر ہم اس پہ کام کریں تو وہ شاید انٹرنیشنل لیول پہ پہنچ جائے گا لیکن ایک سال دو سال تین سال میں نہیں پہنچے گا جی اٹس گوئنگ ٹو بی لانگ پرولانگ ایفرٹ اینڈ ہمیں ان فلوز کی ابھی ضرورت ہے سو وی نیڈ ٹو آر فرسٹ پرائرٹی شوڈ بی کہ ہم اپنے لوگوں کو اس لیول پہ ٹرین کر سکیں کہ پاکستان انٹرنیشنل میپ پہ آ جائے جو کہ ہم ابھی نہیں ہیں انفارچونیٹلی سو آئی تھنک دیٹ از مور امپورٹنٹ اینڈ اینڈ آئی فیل دیٹ بائی گیونگ مور پیپل دی اپرچونیٹی ڈو انٹرنیشنل لیول ایجوکیشن وہ جو آبجیکٹو ہے وہ میٹ ہو رہا ہے جی اور ظاہر ویسے بھی اگر آپ نے ڈالر اکانومی کے اندر کام کرنا ہے تو آئی تھنک دیٹس دا موسٹ امپورٹنٹ تھنگ کہ یو نیڈ ٹو ہیو لائک آل دا کمیونیکیشن اسکلس ہر طرح کا top of the top whether it's an online whether it's an offline you, work you, you know you need to know the language you need mm. to uh, understand uh, their work ethic mm. you need to understand uh, where they're coming from you know wo uh, dekhiye ab jo jobs bhi available hain ab for example a lot of people log pakistan mein baith ke bhi aap ye aap gig economy aapki bahut badi ho gayi hai wo individual outsourcing kar rahe hain پاکستان میں بیٹھ کے آئی تھنک دیٹس اے گڈ تھنگ ٹو ڈو بیکاز آپ کی کاسٹ آف لونگ از مچ لوور اینڈ آپ کا مارک ڈالرز میں رہے ہوتے ہیں لیکن یو نو ان آڈر ٹو ڈو دیٹ اگر آپ نے ڈائریکٹلی کام کرنا ہے فورن کسٹمرس کے ساتھ اس کا پاکستان کو بہت فائدہ ہوتا ہے اگر لوگ یہاں بیٹھ کے فرض کریں اکاؤنٹنگ سروسز دے رہے ہیں کسی فورن کمپنی کو تو اس کی تو انفلو آ رہی ہے نا پاکستان کے اندر سو بٹ یو کین اونلی ڈو دیٹ اگر آپ کو ان کی آئی ایم ناٹ سینگ صرف زبان کی سمجھ آئے گی لیکن ان کے وے آف تھنکنگ کی آپ کو سمجھ آئے گی کہ اگلا سوچ کیا رہا ہے وہ کس کانٹیکس میں میرے سے بات کر رہا ہے تو اب ریالٹی یہ ہے کہ یو نو جو اسٹینڈرڈز ہیں دوز ہیو بین سیٹ بائی ڈیولپ کنٹریز اینڈ ایف وی وانٹ ٹو ٹیک ایڈوانٹیج آف بینگ ایبل ٹو ایکسپورٹ ٹو دوز کنٹریز وچ وی ڈو وانٹ ٹو ڈو وہ تو ہمارا ایک اسٹیڈ آبجیکٹو ہے دین وی نیڈ ٹو میک شیور دیٹ آر پیپل آر ٹرینڈ ٹو دیٹ لیول اینڈ وداؤٹ یوزنگ اینڈ ڈپلائنگ دا بیسٹ کریکولا اویلیبل ان دا ورلڈ آئی کان سی اینی ادر وے دیٹ وی کین ڈو دیٹ ریلی اور جنرلی ویئر ڈو یو سی دس ہول آن لائن ڈو یو تھنک پاکستان میں لائک پک اپ آئی ایم شیور آپ لوگ تو کر رہے ہیں بٹ ویئر ڈو یو سی لائک ان لیٹ سے فائیو ایئرز ان پاکستان آئی یو نو آئی تھنک دیٹ دیر از اے اسپیس بوتھ فار آن لائن ایجوکیشن اینڈ فزیکل اچھا میں ایک چیز کہیں تھی آپ نے وہ آن لائن اینڈ جو میں نے اس کا یہ بھی کہا تھا کہ جو ہوم بریج کے اندر جو ہم اس کے فزیکل کمپوننٹس ہیں نا جو لیبز اینڈ ایکسٹرا کریکولر ایکٹیویٹیز ہیں وہ ہم پھر اسکولس میں کراتے ہیں سو دے ہیو لائک ٹو اور تھری فزیکل ڈیز ایوری منتھ وی دے ڈو لیبز ایکسٹرا کریکولر ایکٹیویٹیز بٹ لیسن ڈلیوری ہیپنز آن لائن بٹ یو نو موونگ آن ٹو یور ادر کوشچن آئی تھنک دیر از اے اسپیس ایک تو آئی تھنک جو آپ کے بریک اینڈ ماڈر اسکولز ہیں نا ان کے اندر لاٹ مور ٹیکنالوجی ول کام ان اب جیسے میں آپ کو یو نو فلپ کلاس روم کی بات کر رہا تھا یو نو دیر از نو ریزن وائی دس میتھڈالوجی شوڈ اونلی بی یوز ان آن لائن ایجوکیشن یو نو اٹ میکس اے لاٹ آف سینس Uh, in fact, the flipped classroom model is not something which came out of online education. It 
came out of just regular education. So I think, um, uh, and we've already started doing this in a lot of schools, you know, where we have uh, started using a lot of like literacy and numeracy software. We ask students to go home and do their uh, homework mm. on uh, different software systems, which we have provided them which help them prepare at home. And then when they come to school, you know, the uh, discussion uh, and, the, you know, and, and, and what goes on in class is much more activity and group work based. Um, and so I think we're starting to use a lot more technology in schools. Um, so ek wo bhi ho hai. I think brick and mortar may there'll be a lot more technology being used invariably in the near future. But uh, I think purely online education bhi hoegi. Hmm. My honest opinion is ke for very young kids, it's like challenging, hmm. right? I mean, so uh, I mean, how will you get a six year old kid to do fully online yeah. education? You know, they're learning is very different mm, anyway. Mm. It comes from, you know, manipulating physical objects, mm. a lot more physical interaction. I think what will happen is as kids get older and um, get closer to college level and at the college level, you will start getting a lot more online and hybrid mm, learning mm, options, mm. you know, like you have with Homebridge. Mm. Um, because uh, older people um, have more, an more of an ability to do self-directed learning, they you know they uh, can manage their schedule. Mm. They more responsible in, in managing their own academics, and unki learning bhi thori si zada technical reading based. Hai. You know when you're in um, uh, doing an undergrad program, for example, um, you know you have to do a lot of reading. Mm. When you're mm. in class one, yeah. you don't have to do a lot of reading. You have to manipulate mm. you know blocks and physical items and develop your motor skills and dexterity and your social skills. Um, so I think at the um, higher education level and maybe which is why we started with A-levels here and at the more senior level, it's likely that these options will become available and 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 they will and what they will do is they will provide uh, an incredible quality of education uh, to people who may otherwise not have been able to afford uh, to access that education mm. of brick and mortar school. But increasingly, you know, uh, even with Homebridge, what we're looking at is perhaps providing more and more brick and mortar exposure. So doing more, you know, as we have more students in the program, we'll probably increase the number of physical clubs and sports days. So you'll end up with fully online programs. You'll end up with mostly brick and mortar programs mm. with more use of technology, but then you'll end up with a lot of hybrid technology programs mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. But I think what is definitely going to be obsolete is any education system which doesn't use technology. Yeah. That doesn't have a future, mm -hmm. right? Because uh, it's just, even in the brick and mortar scenario, the kind of learning outcomes we can give to our students when we use technology as a supplement to the classroom teacher, it just increases the learning outcomes, mm -hmm. you know, uh, exponentially. There's no comparison. Nasir, thank you so much for taking the time out. I think you guys are doing a very important work, especially for the future of Pakistan, because I feel like politics or all the things are but education is, I think, one of the things which will take us uh, somewhere, inshallah. I, I, I mean, education is, uh, I, I would say it is the only thing, Yeah. right? It's it's just honestly, it's, um, uh, it's not something you can compromise mm. on. Uh, uh, you know, it, it is the foundation True. of any society, uh, no matter what we do in mm. Pakistan, unless we and the and you know, the, the, the ROI on education is very quick. Mm. You know, you educate someone, you know, within uh, there's research uh, uh, that has been done, uh, uh, quantitative research, which can show uh, that increase in education outcomes, you know, at the secondary or higher primary level can lead to actual GDP increases in five, six or seven years. Hmm. So even on a medium term time frame, um, education improvement can lead to very, very quick hmm. uh, economic growth. And, sure. and it's really the only thing that can. So yeah. we don't have a choice. That's true. Thank you so yeah. much again. Thank, Thank you. you